There's a reason you should listen to your gut. It's linked to both mental and physical health and is known as our second brain. So it should come as no surprise that your gut can play a big role in influencing your mood. Holistic nutritionist Sharon Holland is here now to talk about ways to eat to help boost your mood. Hi, Sharon. Good morning, Aubrey. How are you today? I'm doing well. You know, talk about this relationship between your gut and your mood. Yeah, so our gut is our super powerhouse and it is filled with trillions of microbes and bacteria and it's connected to our brain through the superconductor highway called the vagus nerve. So when our gut's inflamed and there's a lot of smoke, they're not able to communicate properly. So things start to go haywire. Oh, wow. So we often hear the term inflammation when we talk about some of the things that are going on inside of our bodies. Can you explain exactly what that means? Sure. Inflammation is our body's natural response to protect itself. And there are two kinds of inflammation. There's acute inflammation, which is short term, a few days, maybe a few weeks. It could be a cut on the finger. It bleeds and then it heals. And there's chronic inflammation, which lingers for months and years. And what that does to the body is that it puts it in a heightened state of alert, that fight or flight mode. And when that happens, our body is not able to respond so quickly. So your body then starts to weaken and you start to develop symptoms. And that makes your body more susceptible to disease. So how do bodies become inflamed in the first place? There are so many ways that that happens. A lot of it starts with the foods that we eat, the processed foods that have all these different preservatives and ingredients. And it's also our lifestyles, the stress that we're under, lack of sleep, the toxins in the air, and even from not drinking enough water, we're putting and taxing our bodies every single day. So we have to find ways to manage that and live with it. Oh man, so let's talk about what we can do. What are the things that are needed to start to de decrease any inflammation? One of the first things that I always tell my clients and in my book is we need to look at the body as a whole. So yes, we want to be able to eat all these healthy foods that I have over here, which I'll share in a minute, but we also want to look at a really good self-care routine because it's, again, holistic. We want to find ways to improve our sleep patterns. We want to be able to exercise, drink more water, have fun, and ways to decrease stress, even if it's just <sighs> taking a breath and learning how to breathe properly for our bodies. So what kind of advice can you give about the types of food that we should add to our meals that'll help? There are so many foods that we can add. So let's start with the colors of the rainbow. I always say shop the perimeter of the supermarket and add in all these fruits and vegetables that are colorful. These colors are all the different phytonutrients and antioxidants that our bodies need to decrease that inflammation, to improve our immune system, and to allow our brain to be able to communicate with our gut. In addition to all of these foods with the colors of the rainbow, you also want to add foods that have probiotics. Probiotics are your powerhouse, right? They help to create a really good environment for your body to be able to produce and to produce the hormones it needs and reduce the inflammation. A glass of coconut kefir or maybe sauerkraut. And in addition to the probiotics, you want foods that have prebiotics. This is like supercharging fertilizer for the probiotics. And again, all of this goes back to eating wholesome foods, the perimeter of the supermarket, pineapple, eggs, chickpeas, uh, wild salmon. If you incorporate all of these different types of fresh foods, your body will be able to reduce the inflammation. It will lead to clearer thinking. It'll improve your mood. You'll be able to produce more serotonin, which is one of your happy hormones that will also, again, improve your mental state. Oh, well, that does sound good. And then what about the no-nos? Sharon, what are the foods we need to stay away from? Oh, the biggest thing, and everybody's heard this before, sugar, any added sugar. And this is really important to remember is that it's not just thinking, well, I don't really eat sugar, but it's hidden in so many of the sauces and the, uh, the dressings that we're buying in the supermarket. So you want to learn how to read your labels. Sugar equals inflammation, and it also spikes our insulin. And when that happens, we get irritable and it also then increases our, our and we become more susceptible to depression. So try to minimize that as much as possible. And any final thought on how to boost our moods in a good way? 
the way to do this is not to be overwhelmed because there's so much information. It's to take it slowly, take one step at a time, find something new to add in. Whether you're going to pick up exercising, whether you're going to drink more water, adding in a new fruit or vegetable, this is your lifestyle, it's your journey. So find something that resonates so that you can create a new habit and your gut and your brain will thank you. I love it. Thanks so much for this information. If you want more on gut health, you can visit her site, SharonHolland.com.